The prayer of restoration. What we want to share with you next is what we believe is one of the most beautiful demonstrations of God's grace, a lavish gift unearned. The Bible tells us that God dealt with David and showed him the error of his ways, much like the prodigal son, and reminded him of the wonderful experience there was in the father's house. Now, as David was there remembering, recalling, taking spiritual inventory, I'm sure that he remembered the times when he sang and danced before the Lord and wept with tears of joy, his heart brimming with the goodness of God. And he probably doesn't even know how far he got. And certainly he didn't realize at the time that he was slipping away. But he clearly found out about those wax apples and that they won't do anything for you when trouble comes knocking. Church family, I think there is something that we can learn from David. If you've got no joy, God hasn't changed. If you've got no peace, God hasn't changed. If you've got no self-control, God's not changed. And if you've got no patience, love, gentleness, God hasn't changed. David realized the truth that God hadn't moved, but instead he was the one that was moving away. The Bible is clear. God is our saviour, he is our refuge, and he is the provider of all good things. But in many ways, we are responsible for the condition of our own hearts. In Psalm chapter 51, we see how David got down before God and began to cry out with a repentant heart and ask the Lord for forgiveness and that God would purge him of his sins, wash him and make him whiter than snow. Next, David ordered up some fruit. Not fake ones, but real fruit. He said, God, I'm ready to put this wax mess away. I'm ready for something satisfying. In Psalm 51 verse 12, David says, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Today's message is about making us stop and think about our true spiritual situation. I don't know where you're all at today. You don't have to be as far down as David got. But I do want to ask, how long has it been since you ate the fruit of his goodness? To all of us in a special way, to the dads, the men in the room, the men who carry out our families, our homes, our churches, how long has it been since you felt something inside of you that you could hardly contain? How long has it been since the peace of God has overwhelmed your life to a point where you were able to sing, I've got peace like a river, love like an ocean, and joy like a fountain? How long has it been since the words of the Bible were something more than just a phrase you repeated, but were rather the bedrock of your life? In one of his meetings, Dwight L. Moody was explaining to his audience the truth that we cannot bring about spiritual changes by our own strength. He demonstrated this principle like this. Tell me, he said to his audience, how can I get the air out of the glass I have in my hand? One man said, suck it out with a pump. But Moody replied, that would only create a vacuum and shatter it. Finally, after many suggestions, he picked up a jug and quietly filled the glass with water. There, he said, all the air is now removed. He explained the victory for the child of God does not come by working hard to eliminate sinful habits, but rather allowing Christ to take full possession. Let me say to you, dads and all present here today, you'll never muster it up by yourself. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse five, I am the vine, you are the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let me say to you, if you've lost your joy, maybe you need to call out to the Lord as David did. Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. If you're needing more of the faith that comes only through the Holy Spirit, then perhaps you need to call out as the father of the boy whom Jesus healed Lord, I believe, 
but I need you to help my unbelief. If you're struggling in an area of your life, maybe you need to call out to the Lord, Lord, can you give me back my self-control? If you're struggling with deep despair, today you need to call out to the Lord, please restore my peace. Whatever's lacking in your life today, you need to call out to the Lord and say, God, won't you restore to me the things that the enemy has taken away from me? Maybe you were closer to God at one point than you are today. And so in conclusion, the fruit is not just there to make you look good. It is not just there to serve us as an ornament for our lives. It is there to satisfy the hunger on the inside of each of us. The fruit is there so that when the world around you is bent out of shape, you don't have to be. The fruit is there to sustain you through tough times. It is there to see you through hard times. Check your fruit basket and wherever you find any wax apples, they've got to go. That's the front you put on for your family, your friends, your church people. It's a facade that says everything is okay when you're actually dying from hunger on the inside. It's that place in your life where you're struggling with destructive habits, yet you want everyone to believe you're a saint. It's that part of you that continues in misery and you're afraid to let anybody see that old wax apple. You need to exchange it today for the fruit of the Spirit. Amen.